brush panel is probably the best resource to use when you want to customize your painting efforts. I don't want to go through every single little thing on the panel because there are so many different attributes that can be adjusted. Instead, I think this is one of those things you'll learn better by doing than by listening to either me or Whitney explain. So after we talk about the basics of the brush panel, I'd like you to spend a few minutes clicking through the panel and experimenting with the settings. Make an adjustment and then start painting on your workspace. Take note of what's changed and how it affected your brush stroke. If you like the result, you should write down the adjustment that you made so you can recreate it later uh, as needed. The basic features of the brush panel we would like you to become comfortable with include the size, which we've covered in the previous video, roundness, hardness, or softness, depending on how you want to look at it, spacing, and tip shape options like round point, round blunt, rough dry brush, oil medium, wet edges, etc. If you create a brush that you really like or you think you'll need to use at a later date, you can always save a copy of it via the Options Flyout menu in the top right corner of the brush panel. Once the Options Flyout menu is opened, there will be a new brush preset option. Click to save your brush settings. If you choose to save a brush preset, it's important to know you can save it via the brush panel. But if you'd like to access it at a later date and time, you'll need to do so via the brush presets panel. Which, which we also covered in the last video. Before we jump to Photoshop, I'd like to show you just how many options are available to you via the brush panel. The seven screenshots you're seeing right now are just some of the other options you can adjust, including shape dynamics, scattering, texture, dual brush, color dynamics, transfer, brush pose, noise, wet edges, buildup, smooth, uh, pretext, texture, etc. You can also launch the brush presets panel, like we said a few minutes ago, to save your brushes, but you can also add more brushes. So Photoshop has lots of brushes that are available to you, and if you uh, aren't comfortable or you don't like the ones that you can see on your brush panel or your brush pre presets panel, you can hit the option flyout menu in the top right hand corner, like you can see on the slide here, and then you can add one of the new brush libraries. It's important to choose append because when you append it adds to the list. If you choose OK, it will replace all of the brushes with the new library. The last thing that we want to talk about before we jump over to Photoshop is the idea of an erodible point. Um, if you launch the brush panel under shape, um, there's a drop down and you can change the tip of your brush to be erodible, meaning that it'll start to wear away the way that a pencil or a crayon is that how you say that? I say crown. I'm really it's bad crayon. at pronouncing things because I'm from New Jersey. Um, and it will become dull and more flat as you work. If you don't want that to happen, you can change the erodible point and you can change it to a setting that you would prefer. So now we're going to jump over and we're going to go to Photoshop and demo some of the things that we're talking about. But there are a lot. So I'm going to ask for Whitney's help and maybe she can keep, keep me on track and tell me what we should demo uh, next and what, what would cover what we've talked about in the video. Okay, well, why don't you start by opening the brush panel? Okay, so the brush panel can be opened in a number of ways. You can open it if you have your painting workspace set. It should be hanging out over here on the right-hand side. It looks like a little cup that has paint brushes in it, and you can click on that and it will open. Or you can go to the window menu and choose brush. I already have it open. You just saw me open it, and so it has a check mark next to it. If I was to choose it right now, it will disappear. And so just keep that in mind. And then I'm a fan of undocking things when I use them, so I'm going to undock it so that we can have it floating around when we're ready to use it. Now it's grayed out right now because I don't have a brush selected. And so I'm going to choose the, the brush tool, some people call that the paintbrush, and you'll see it will activate and now I can adjust the settings. So why don't you review the changing brush size via the brush panel. So when you're looking at the brush panel, there are a few key things that we would like you to definitely be able to do. A lot of the other ones are going to be optional, but one of them is the size. And so I'm going to change, first of all, I'm going to change my brush to be a circle brush so that when I paint, it'll paint in a circle. And then you can change the size by increasing the size slider on the brush panel, and you can make it bigger or smaller. Um, why don't you talk about hardness? The hardness, I like to view it as softness. I know that technically it's called hardness, but on the panel right now it says softness. Um, to me, I, I view it as softness. I want to have more softness or less softness. If you have 0% softness, you have a hard edge on your shape. 
and if you have 100% softness, you have a fuzzy edge to the edge of what you're painting. And so in our previous videos when we were painting with the green brush, you saw it was kind of fuzzy on the edges. Those were brushes that had um, either 100% or very large percentage of, of softness. And you can see as I slid this over to the left and to the right, it changes between hardness and softness, depending on the brush that you have. And so on this one, you can see the hardness is at 100%, and it's a solid line around the outside. But if the hardness is at zero, it's got a fuzzy edge. We'll leave it somewhere in the middle. Cool. How about the roundness? The roundness can also be adjusted here, and it's based on percentage. And so you can see that if I change this to 50% round, um, it creates a different look and feel. It depends on what brush you have selected, though. And so um, just because you change the roundness on this one, it still kind of is going to look the same. If I make this 100% or 50, it just kind of, well, that's 5, not 50. If I make it 50, it just looks like a thinner line. If you change to a different type of line, you're going to get a different uh, result on on what that roundness does to your brush. Very cool. All right, so what about the brush tip and shape? And so when you select the brush tip on the left-hand side here, um, under where it says brush presets, you can change what the tip looks like. Like you want a fan brush, or you want, um, this one is an airbrush. There are different ones depending on what brushes you have appended. This one looks like leaves, which is usually really popular. I'm gonna leave it on that one because I think for the next couple demos, um, you'll be able to see the adjustments uh, when we have a shape that is the brush. And so if I brushed right now, it would look like leaves. And you can see the leaves are overlapping, so it kind of doesn't look like leaves at all. It just looks like a pattern. Great. So um, what about the spacing? The spacing, if you have something like the leaves that are on the screen here, the spacing allows more space between each of the items. And so if I increase the spacing, you can see that I could get to a point that I was painting leaves and none of them were touching. And so the the lower the percentage is, the more they're going to overlap. And so you could make it so low that it just kind of makes a solid line. Or you could space it out so far away that you're creating individual leaves. And so if we do that for, let's do this little blade of grass here, the same idea applies. If I space it out more, if I increase the percentage, I would have the grass blades spaced further apart. And it works on all brushes. So if we just grab this guy here, we can increase the spacing. And you'll see that it can look more like... Um, to me, it kind of looks like fireworks. Like if I wanted to paint fireworks on something, I could use this brush. And so maybe I make it so far apart that when I click, I just get one firework burst on each one. This one here, you can see from the little picture that it has these little icons on it. But when you go to use the brush, let's zoom back in a little bit. When you go to use the brush, it just looks like a streak. But if you increase the spacing, you can see all the different little plots that are used to create that streak or that brush as you brush it across your workspace. Um, there, right. there are a couple other things, sorry to, to jump on you, Whitney, there. There are a couple other things, and in the video, or the earlier part of this video, I said that there's just so many things to show you in the brush panel that we just don't have time to go through each one individually. And they are all the other options that you see under where it says brush tip shape. There's shape dynamics, scattering, texture, color dynamics, etc. And I want to show you how that works, but in order for it to work, I want to make sure that I have a color selected and then if I grab my brush tool I'm gonna to go back to the leaves so I think the leaves are a good example if I paint with this you have to be on a layer to paint you can paint we can increase the spacing like we did before and so now I'm painting and the leaves are all spaced out if we get to like color dynamics you have to actually click on the word and then you can um, adjust how the color is applied so there's a huge jitter that's your color and so if you increase the hue jitter as you paint, it's going to change the colors that you're painting with. And so maybe I've gone too far because now when I paint my fall leaves, I'm getting reds and greens and yellows and oranges, but I got this pink color. So we could lower it a little bit and then paint again. Um, you'll want to make sure that you're, you're figuring out the settings that work for what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe you want to have a, a bigger hue jitter and do different things. And so what I would like you to do at this point is I want you to kind of click through here and see what happens. What does scatter do? So scatter, if we increase the, the scatter of something, see on the example, it's, it's spacing them apart. And so the lines that I drew with the, the leaf brush here, um, they're just in, the, in a straight line. But if I increase the scatter and then I paint them, they're kind of going randomly across the page. And so maybe I could use that if I'm trying to make it look like I have a pile of leaves. 
I would like to you to practice using these for, I don't know, a few minutes until you feel comfortable with the brush settings and then you can move on to our next video which will talk about how to use the mixer brush tool to paint over an image.